F5 Distributed Cloud enables compute directly at edge locations, whether it's on-prem, in a local data center, or in nearby provider sites. What's unique to Distributed Cloud customer edge sites is the ability to continue providing localized services even when external connectivity is lost. Distributed Cloud already supports full mesh connectivity of the data planes, allowing other connected sites to transit data and even handle off-site load balancing as required. What's new about it today is that it's now possible for a customer edge site to continue providing services locally to the site when it's entirely cut off from the rest of the world. To showcase this feature, enabling both data plane and control plane services while offline, I've deployed the distributed app BookInfo. This is an example of a modern app that's publicly maintained by Istio. In my deployment, this multi-tier app consists of several workloads, one of which resides locally, yet is only available as a backup. In this example, the app's main product info page pulls in product reviews from its reviews app service. Reviews in turn pulls ratings data which aggregate from additional sources online. Because rating data is volatile, it's preferred to pull this from an online evergreen source. However, this makes the app that users access dependent on it being online. To minimize the impact of outages to the app, a periodically updated version of the ratings data is kept locally offline and is made available only when needed during lapses of connectivity. All right, now let's take a look at how to make this configuration. First, log into the distributed cloud console and go under shared configuration. Here, you're going to create a virtual site. Now, this site is needed so to connect all of your CE sites in a full mesh environment. Select the site type of CE. And for the selector expression, you could simply use a site tag that includes all CE types. But if you just want to apply to certain types, being in a certain mesh group, then you can certainly change the selector as needed. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, key and value pair that I've pre-created and assigned to my sites called site group and the value of group sites. This combines just two of the sites for this demo. Once the virtual site is created, navigate to the cloud and edge sites, site management, and then go to the Azure VNet site, and we'll take a look at the configuration. If you scroll down to the advanced configurations, and you may need to enable advanced fields, notice that we have enable and disable for offline survivability mode. Make sure that that is enabled before you go forward with adding that site to the site mesh group. Do the same for all of your CE sites, including, in my case, the AWS TGW site. The final step here is to create a site mesh group, which will then work with the virtual site to combine all the CEs into a full mesh. Give the group a name. Add in the virtual site that we just created under the shared config. And for your choice here, choose full mesh. And notice there are two options data plane, and then control and data plane mesh. In this example, we use the new capability of control and data plane mesh. The final step, we can go to our site mesh configuration view. And notice that when I open up the site mesh group, we can now see that both sites are green, up and available, both at the control level, data plane level, as well as our tunnel between the sites. If we look at our dashboard, we can see that the offline survivability field says it is enabled. This is an important distinguishment between disabled and configured. You're looking for enabled to show that the feature has been deployed successfully. With CE survivability confirmed and enabled, let's now take a look at the application. Now I'm accessing this application using the distributed cloud global network, but users also access this application locally. If you take a close look, there are three components to this application. The first is the details endpoint. That's the main ingress point to the application. Details calls reviews, and reviews in turn calls ratings. Now ratings is deployed on multiple sites, while details and reviews are on my local site only. So if I go over and, uh, for example, ratings uh, being on multiple sites, Basically, the idea here is that the online site for ratings will constantly be updating the ratings service. 
and the one that's locally used has an out-of-date version and uses and consumes less space locally. If we take a look at how this app renders, we can see that there's book details on the left side, along with reviews and ratings on the right. If we take a look at our uh, quick look at our load balancer for the site, we can see that when I accessed my app, there was a call out from the Azure VNet site to the AWS TGW site where the preferred ratings service lives. Now, if you're familiar with the e-survivability, there was an additional feature that existed prior to this uh, control and data plane, and that is the data plane capability. And what that allowed you to do was to say in access or continue to access other CE sites where other origin pools may live if you had or lost connectivity to the global network, regional edge, or the global controller. Now to simulate a site failure, because my CE site is deployed in a public cloud, I'm going into my security group and I'm denying traffic that would otherwise enable the tunnels coming into and out of the site. So by disabling the traffic, I'm effectively isolating the site to its own internal virtual network traffic. Once the security group changes are made, we can pop open a shell and take a look and log into our CE site. And I'll take a quick look at the status of our tunnels. If you do status VER and drop down to the site tunnel status list, you can see that most of the tunnels are down. The remaining tunnel will be taken offline with a change to the network ACL on my peer site. You may find that it's helpful to expedite the transition during testing by doing a soft restart for the VER and VPM modules. So once all of the services have restarted, you should see your main tunnels down, including those to the global controller Ares. Now with our tunnels down, let's switch over to our site and we can confirm that the tunnel is indeed down to the management platform. Now, if we open up a shell onto our site workload, and this is just one extra container used to access the workload, you can see that I'm still able to access the rating service with a 200 OK. That's pretty important because if I go over to my web browser and I try to reload the app, you can see that it's clearly not connected, at least to my point of entrance. If we hop over to the load balancer section and we look at our ratings multi-site service, we can see that if I, if I pop over to requests and I try to do an update, we can see that there are no known requests over just the recent interval of the last five minutes. Now, I clearly I got a 200 OK, but there is no new requests. That's important because it shows that although the CE is offline, it's able to make intelligent decisions to continue proxying and load balancing traffic to the extent that it's possible with the connectivity that's local on the site. And there you have it. That's how to use the distributed cloud, multi-cloud networking CE survivability feature with the combined benefit of data plane and control plane resilience. If you're interested in learning more about this feature, I invite you to go to f5.com slash cloud slash products slash multi-cloud transit. You can also find additional information in the links in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching.